Today's guest is a stand-up comedian from the UK. He's also known for his hilarious sketch videos on YouTube, as well as his pro-evolution soccer streams on Twitch. Uh, it's me, Little Daddy. How are you doing? Do you want little to come Daddy? and play? Little Daddy? This thing, okay. yeah. Sit on it. This... What? Sit on what? Oh, that's like his thing, his catchphrase, you know. Little Daddy's catchphrase is to sit on it. That's a bit of fun. A couple years ago, he blew up on Twitch because of his brilliant football streams, where he plays the manager, does voice acting for other characters in the universe, and comes up with entire storylines. You're not scoring currently, and you're not assisting that many either, and we want to put that right. We need you cutting in having pops, because we know you have a wonderful shot and celebration to boot. Thank you, Gaffer. I've been under uh, hanging out with uh, Mr. Risa, Going to Odeon Cinema, I watched Oppenheimer Gaffer. It's like Star Wars. It's freaking awesome. Language, please. I don't like swearing. In this episode, the boys talked about all kinds of things, from what it's like auditioning for roles, touring the country, and selling out for HelloFresh. I had to be like, oh, it's a sub. And I had to do this with my hands, which <laughs> listeners can't see. But I had to be like, oh, because that was a subway thing they were doing. Yeah, I did that for a thousand pounds. I know, man, I know. for these these are just good our our annual catch-ups yeah sure <laughs> my man I'm, I'm excited to chat again uh i don't remember if you were did you get married last time we talked or were you in the process of getting married probably in the process do you remember when it was last time it was like a, a year a year ago i want to say i mean i've been married for just over a year so i'm not sure it doesn't matter. That was, that was marriage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's good. Thanks. Yeah, it's. Um, How's it's the marriage? It's like it's a very different question depending on the like where I put the emphasis. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, it's been it's it's been interesting. Like, um, it's it's weird. It's been like the the so we have a a, a cost of living crisis. It's called in the UK which is our new thing that we have where uh -huh. everything is just too expensive. But like, so, it's, that's everywhere. No. Well, I mean, you know, isn't that kind of, a I, problem I don't know. To be honest, I don't know. I hear people say it's everywhere, but I, I guess there's feels, levels to it. Yeah. It feels worse. I think everywhere, everything feels worse in the UK. <laughs> right. <laughs> Cause you're not, yeah. You're paying a lot to live in a place that's kind of miserable. I mean, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah it's like as soon as i got married it just I, I felt the the cost of everything go up like just food and stuff like even like meat like it's all just uh it's all kind of ridiculous you have to budget a lot more and plan things out and like you know it, it's, it's not as fun so like yeah there's been there's been struggles with some stuff but yeah, overall it's it's great yeah. <laughs> it's like besides the unaffordable living yeah it's actually pretty great yeah yeah and Hot the weather thing. and the weather and the weather. yeah what okay what are the desirable uh qualities of england if i may ask because i yeah. don't think i've ever gotten anyone to tell me why they remain in england besides the obvious ones like family and friends yeah okay well i have my family and friends here as well like as, as i was born here um okay it is no london is i i do obviously i'm being a bit sarcastic i, I really love london like I do think mm -hmm. it's an amazing city, like from my perspective, for my work. So like, um, stand up acting, oh, sure. it, it, it's, there's so much opportunity. There's so much, like, especially when you're, when you're brand new and you're doing the open mic thing, there's a lot here. Um, it's not necessarily all good, but you can get on stage and that doesn't exist around the rest of the country. And I know a lot sure. of European countries just don't have stand up really at all. A scene. Um, no, yeah. not really a scene. Exactly. So, um, yeah, no, it is. I do really love it. And like, I, I love working in London and like all the like, 
the way it is over here, all the auditions and all your agents and stuff are all based in London as well. So, um, right. Yeah, I like it. It's it's you know very busy city. There's there's a lot to do. The Gunners are there, of course. Of You're course, a of course. Gunners fan, I assume you go to a lot of games. I do. Yeah, I got a season ticket. Yeah. Hell yeah. 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 So you think, the, you think this is the year? <laughs> probably it not. Could happen. I think it could, but I think Man City are too uh, too good yeah. still. Uh, but I, I I don't really care, man. I, I enjoy going and um, I just enjoy when we're playing well, to be honest. I'm not one of these, you know, there's sports fans that are just miserable. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like their whole day is ruined because of a, mm. uh, a performance. I don't I don't remember the last time my whole day was ruined. If no, like now I've come to expect Serbia coming like I've ex- I've embraced that Serbia will have tremendous potential and at some point uh, flop uh, on an international level. Sure. And then for football, like I, I love Red Star Belgrade. So like yeah. anytime they get into the Champions League, it's already like above my expectations. So if they get like trashed by Man City, which they didn't, they only lost 3-1 to Man City in fucking Manchester, which is great. Yeah. But there's no like expectation there. And so how do I, they do no... in their league? Red Star. Uh, they win it like every year. It's okay. just like... It's like voting in Russia. I feel like right. you know. <laughs> <laughs> if you, if someone said, "Okay, a million dollars, where are you going to invest it? Who's going to win the next election in Russia, or some actual like investment?" I'm taking that one any day of the week. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I yeah, I, I think I allow myself to sort of. Uh, I have like I'd say thirty minutes max where I can be annoyed about a sport right. result. You know. I can't Does it, it vary depending on the kind of result it is? Like if you, let's say, okay, if you lost like 2-1 and you were winning one nothing in the going yeah. to the eighth minute. Yeah, and it depends who you're playing, lenient. right? Like, I think also mm-hmm. the nature of the thing. So like, we lost to West Ham a few weeks ago um, at home and we had so many chances. Wasteful, completely right. wasteful. And then they go and score and then score again. And it's like that sort of thing. That's just miserable. Or like losing to a rival, like if I like if we lose to Tottenham personally, oh yeah, that really annoys me. Um, that's that's one of the worst feelings for me. But then it goes away, like it's fine. It's know? not that big of a deal, yeah. No, <laughs> it's all right. Yeah, you're just sad for like a week and a half. I mean, <laughs> but if if that's the, I mean, is that a thing of like football is the only thing you have in life, so that's why like it has so much weight. Maybe. That, like, the, yeah. What does that come down to? Maybe there are people that put too much into it. Definitely, like I was watching some. There was this clip that went a bit viral of this Man United fan on one of these fan channels talking about like how he doesn't have uh, a lot of family anymore, and Man United yeah. are really important to him. And now they're playing like this, so he's even more sad. And it's like that you can't, you can't mm. live like that, you know, because they don't care about you, right? They at don't. all. They're... They can't. Yeah. You know. A part of you just like knows the trick there, which is like this uh, tribalism to a, a club yeah. that I mean really doesn't have much to do with you. I don't know. As I get older, I stop caring. I I still care, but I st- I don't care as much. I'm not as emotionally invested as when I was like a kid or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. Like, who, but who there's cares? a lot of men who are <laughs> basically like children, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I was going to ask you this because we were mm-hmm. talking about living in London and, and work there. Would you still live in London if uh, if it wasn't tied to the career as much? It's a good question. Um, I was, I've been thinking about this recently because we, we currently... Sorry. No, no, it's okay. I could have edited we, that out, but that's all good. I muted it when I coughed. That was, that was really good. nice of you. That, that No guest has ever done that. Holy smokes. Yeah. <laughs> this guy, um, everybody. We got a professional um, on our hands. Yeah uh now because i was thinking about this right like because uh you know to rent in london and most popular cities is super expensive um yep. and with you know if we're ever going to buy anything i was looking at that because again it's going to be a lot more expensive here and i was looking around at where i'd move to and i'm not really sure in the uk i'm not really sure where i'd go because it's not like cheaper enough I would definitely right. miss Arsenal. That is one of the things I was thinking. I was like, I do really like going on a Saturday and that just being part of my day. Like, it's it's just quite a nice hobby, you know? Quite sure. nice escapism that sure. I, I do enjoy. 
Um, and it's not that I mean, other hard places for me to have get clubs. To. Other places have clubs that you can enjoy. Sure. You won't be as invested, but you can That's still the enjoy problem, watch. right? Yeah. And I sit with the yeah. same people because it's a season ticket. Oh, really? So, That's adorable. Yeah, yeah. That's hella yeah. cute. Yeah, so it's quite nice. And luckily, the people I'm with are really nice. Um, so there's that. There's that, like, ritual thing that I would miss. Um, yeah, apart from that, I mean, this is the thing, right? My brother has moved recently, just for temporarily. He's moved to Abu Dhabi mm -hmm. uh, for a work thing. And he's just out there in the sun and it just looks right. really nice. And I don't know if I'd move there, but I do sometimes think like, wouldn't it be cool to just move somewhere really nice? I, I guess I could do that. If, for like, colder months, no? Cold, colder months, maybe. What? For, like move for the colder months, move, like, have a, a base for like, say, harsh winters. I don't know. That would be cool. I guess that's the dream. I'd love that. I guess if I could become like a huge Twitch sensation then you can kind of be anywhere, right? <laughs> That's a funny sentence. I guess if I could just become a huge Twitch sensation, that'd be pretty cool, right? <laughs> yeah. You could be anywhere. You could be anywhere in the world. Um, can you not do that now? You, I mean, with what? some good planning? Like be a Twitch sensation. Of... <laughs> no, no. Uh... <laughs> Come on, dude. Be a Twitch, sen <laughs> be a Twitch sensation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, like, you have a tour scheduled, I believe it starts in May, right, or June? Yeah, that's right. So, you know, you have that period where you have to be there. But then other mm. times, I don't know, I guess you're I guess you're still doing weekly and, and probably several yeah. times a week shows. It's all, To be honest, the thing is, it's, it's all over the place, my stuff, because it's like, it's a mix of stand-up, streaming, then trying to audition yeah. and stuff, and then also, like, writing. So it's like... And it's 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 like I'm half of it you can do things. anywhere, half of it you can do you, yeah. half of it you can do anywhere, half of it you have to do in person. Yeah. So I, I I think I I've always struggled with well since the end of lock well since lock that no yeah since lockdown ended yeah that's when stand up came back. So then I have been struggling with balancing things because it's like it's hard to know how much effort to put into different things. I don't really know because I right. love stand up, but then I just did the Edinburgh Fringe. Well, just I did it in August. And I didn't particularly enjoy it. It felt like a bit of a waste of time. Really? Yeah. Like, Why? Because you're doing your show every day. Or, I don't know, you're doing 24 shows in a row, pretty much. And it's exhausting as it is. And the thing is, the cost of Edinburgh, basically, they absolutely take the piss now with them. Um, the cost of accommodation is crazy up there. Um, mm -hmm. so you're paying loads to stay there and then it becomes a thing where it's like a lottery now and it's like, it, I have to get something out of this for it to be worthwhile. Like, luckily I do make a profit financially, right? but it's still, it's just, it's a lot of work. Like right. it really is too much that like, you feel absolutely exhausted. And <sighs> yeah, I don't know if that was <laughs> worth it, you know, cause it's like, could I put my energy in something else? Yeah. It's like finding this by a fine line of like doing what you enjoy, but also doing what works and what's getting you, uh, yeah. you know, an income and, and is your career in a sense. Right. Yeah. It's just balancing that all out. So like, could you just, I'm... if someone said like you, we were talking about the being a mega star. Okay. Let's just hypothetically say yeah. tomorrow night, the fucking pest stream takes off. You start averaging like 2000 viewers per stream. And that is now your most, uh, your biggest income stream by some margin. Yeah. Would you be able to say, okay, this is going to be what I'm going to dedicate most of my time to. And I would do the other stuff either later or I will, de you know, I'll, I'll put it to the side and, and do it a little less now. I think it has to be. I think you have to prioritize it, right? Because especially now since I got married, it's like I'm not just living for me now. Right. So if there was anything that could make me earn loads of money, that would really help. And the thing about the Pez stuff is I do, it is, you know, it's not like I'm, um, it's not like I'm selling out in any way. It's not like I'm doing something like kind of lame. Like it's, it's not like I'm just doing a sponsored stream for loads of money. It's like, I love right. that stuff and it's, I get to be so creative in it. Um, and there's a, there's, you also get to do comedy in there and you also yeah. have full creative freedom. You also do it on your own time. You can do it remote. I mean, it's such a, it, it's such a all around gig. I mean, it's it's just missing yeah. the element of not being actual stand up, but in a way, it's comedy. You're yeah. you're bringing your own comedy to it. 
Yeah, and you can be more creative than in stand up, right? Because it's a different thing. Because you're not looking for the laughs every other sentence right. or whatever, right? It's 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 you can create kind stories. Of, you yeah. can create yeah levels to it. Yeah, it's a more artistic thing. Like it's very different stand up. I always get asked like whenever I get interviewed somewhere like um, for some press thing, they you know to promote my shows or whatever. They always ask like what I prefer or or if it's like the same and stuff. And it's like they're completely completely different things. Right can't really compare them like totally different um yeah i don't know i mean i've been thinking lately that i should put more effort into twitch and uh try and and and, and social media and stuff because it's like because that's Hell yeah twitch is like a it's a um you know you're getting that income every month yeah whereas yeah. uh you freelance do you ever uh yeah that's what i do yeah, that's my and um, that is what you do. Yeah, and yep. how quickly do people pay you? Are they all, all right? Or? Yeah, all no problem. Oh, I, no I work problem. for real. I work for real companies. Like uh, oh, okay, my, yeah. Like, I f <laughs> I don't work for like <laughs> random guy in the basement of some sort of fucking of his mom's house. Hey man, can you do some graphic design for me? I'll pay you in like three months from now. No, no, I, yeah. I do. I do. Okay, so I have a few gigs that I'm currently doing. So one is like I make these. And this changes from time to time. But currently, uh, one gig is I make these short form ads. Uh, basically, there's a company that makes uh, ads for app companies. Super quick, like 15 to 30 seconds. I write a script, a bunch of different hooks, film a few different shots, get a bit of B-roll. And I don't, I, I hate doing editing now. So actually, we have an editor within the company. Send off the edits. So that's one job. And then I have other clients who are like, oh, we just need you to be in front of the camera, like read a script for us. It's literally like you would do for like an acting job, except mm -hmm. I would do it for a YouTube video. So, cool. um, yeah, like that's, oh, that's, good, that's been a really good source of income. So the, I, I have a different problem. Well, I, I think I on a similar level maybe, but like I'm trying to figure out how much time do I want to dedicate to these things that I know that need to generate me money and to you yeah. know, survive. And how much do I want to put into promote creative pursuits? Because I've noticed that if I tip the scale too much in any direction, I'm not happy. If Because yeah. here's what happens. If I tip the scale in the too much money, I don't have time to do what I like. Yeah. If I tip the scale too much in the doing uh, what I like, I feel like I cannot get to the same level of creativity. It's a really weird thing, but like I need the mundane bullshit because yeah. it produces the most fun creative ideas. I don't, I don't know if you have experience like that. Something like that. Like I find good ideas in the boring times and the mundane yeah. tasks. I don't find good ideas when I'm just at home thinking, oh, this is such a fun thing that I'm doing. Like, I love it. I'm going to think of creative, funny ideas. Like most of the good stuff comes for me. Like when it's kind mm. of in the background. Yeah, it's weird. I think it's like, like I, I've been trying to come up with some scripted ideas for like, you know, TV, film, whatever. And when I'm completely left alone to just come up with the ideas, it's like I can't do it. Impossible. Impossible. For me too, it's impossible. It is so frustrating, isn't it? Because you feel like an it's idiot. It's the worst. <laughs> right? It's the worst because like even now when you have so little time that's free and you set it aside, like I'm going to do this. And then you just get to the, the, the desk and you're like, fuck, I got, I got nothing. I'm yeah. drawing a blank. Yeah, that's really weird. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, well, I've how, do you make a, how do you make a show like The Office? You have to be someone that's worked in an office. Yeah. You have to be someone that knows the inner workings of an office. You mm. can't make the show The Office without ever being in an office. It's such a weird catch 22, right? Yeah. But then he did make Derek and he never worked in a care home. <laughs> what's, what's, <laughs> have you, what's have you seen it? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. And they're good or have no? You not seen... <laughs> no, it's a good or no? No, no. I mean, I don't know. People might think it's good, but he does it. It's, he does quite an offensive. Um, I don't know, man. He's doing a face the whole time and people aren't sure if he's like supposed to be like disabled in some way. Uh, Ricky Derek. Oh, Ricky Gervais is Derek. Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, it's Ricky got Ricky pretty Gervais. solid. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. 8.1 on IMBD. I mean, that's pretty good. Did not expect yeah, I'm, that. I'm not a fan. Sorry. Um, Sorry, Ricky. You. you fuck. No, I'm kidding. Um, but not the, the point being there is like, I think you need some you need to stay in the, I don't know. I mean, you need to stay someone in the normal life to have yeah. ideas that are going to be appealing to the, to the average individual. Does that, does that make sense? I don't know if I'm saying that in a condescending way. No, no, I, I know what you mean. Um, 
but yeah, it's still difficult. Like it's yeah. Even for us, like we have all these like the BBC puts out these like guidelines for people pitching. They're they're public. And it's yeah. like um these are things that we're looking for this year. And it's just all this st- like it just gets so hard. It's like they they don't want it to be set in London. They want it to be more of a re- regional thing, whatever. Um, they want like a f- like family like like sitcoms that are suitable for families, and I'm like already I'm thinking why well, I don't know what that is. I'm out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm out. Yeah. So <laughs> do, yeah. do a criteria. I'm out. <laughs> That's all quite hard. I'm actually I've got a I've got a meeting on Monday about. Um, are you familiar with BBC Radio Four? Uh, I mean, it sounds like it's the radio of BBC. I don't know what. what... One yeah, more. it's it's weird. It's, <laughs> it's it's been around for a long time, and it's like they do a lot of comedy on it, like a lot of mm-hmm. like scripted comedy and stuff, and stand up as well. I've done stand up on there. Um, wow. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 it, it, it can be quite good, and I, I've got I've got to come up with some ideas to pitch to them. Um. Yeah, I forgot what my point was. Yeah, are are you gonna say that uh, it's hard to come up with a script for BBC Four Radio, or are you gonna say something? Because that's what we're talking about. I think it's gonna be easier though. I mean, I've kind of gone off what I was, but it's fine. Um, yeah. Because I've got the pressure of um, the the meetings on Monday, so it's like I need to come up with stuff urgently. And I think there's always that right. thing where, and that's something with streaming actually, that um, the great thing about streaming is that like streaming something like hot Pepsi, the Pez thing is that you have the pressure of a live audience and it's going to start at like, you know, 9 PM or whatever. And then you just have to be ready. And I think that really helps. No backing out. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I saw a, um, there's a documentary, uh, before, before I knew what he was, uh, before all I knew about all of the allegation stuff. Um, there was a couple of Woody Allen documentaries, Oh, what's, um, uh, sorry. I don't. What's the Woody Allen allegations with the the minor know? or something? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I do know. Carry on. I just <laughs> okay. want to make sure we're on. <laughs> uh, there was something. Really I was thinking of Woody Harrelson. I'm thinking of Woody Harrelson. Oh, no, That's no, no. Like, He's all what right. What has he done? I no, love no. that guy. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> so he used to. Um, he was part of some. I don't know drama group or something where they had to put on a play every single week. And okay. Because of that pressure he would just like, they had to do it. Like, there's no option. Like, you, because you, then you don't have time to overthink things, right? You just do it. Um, and if you notice his, like, his movie career, like, as a director, he was, like, putting out a film every single year, which was ridiculous. That's that insane. He'd, like, That's write insane. and direct. Obviously, a lot of them are really bad. Right. To do to do one film is is ridiculous anyway. And I find that it's it's like a similar thing with with stand up. What's really good is like with with the Edinburgh Festival. The reason that so many of us keep doing it is because you've got that pressure of I need a new hour of comedy by August, right? And you do it. You just do it, even if you don't think you physically can. You have to, right? There's no choice. Um, so I wonder if you could put yourself under that kind of pressure creatively. Hmm. I you know? I think. Yeah, I think maybe going forward, because these clients and these current jobs are giving me a sufficient stream of income that I will have the freedom to say, okay, let's say I'm just hypothetically speaking, next year, I'm, I'm going to be okay financially. I'm going to take the year off and just focus on only doing what I want to do. Uh, try to set timelines, deadlines, and all that shit and see how it goes. Worst case scenario, it doesn't work out. I always, I can always find new work, especially in this space with the experience that I have. That's great. If it goes anyway. great, fantastic. I'll just, I'll stay and do, keep doing this. I'm very, is that your cat? You got a cat? No, it's wife or cat walking around. <laughs> making noise. Yeah, making sorry. noise, all good. No, all good. Uh, so yeah, like if it works out great, I can focus more on that. If it doesn't, I have another thing to fall back on. So I think ultimate, I don't know. The ultimate goal I would say is to keep doing less stuff for other people and more stuff for me. Mm-hmm. And I think, I think it could be done. It's just, it, it needs to happen naturally and it can't be too forced. Like I don't want to force it. That's the problem. I mean, so do you know what you want to do creatively? Do you know exactly what it is or are you stuck on that? I have things that I enjoy doing. Uh, I mean, I I always want to have a podcast, whether it goes well or not, because I love talking to people and I don't think that's going to change. The only real thing that would ever stop me is like, oh, okay, it's not doing well. It's not getting a lot of views. Mm-hmm. 
But from that perspective, like I don't really necessarily care. Like I'll, I'll eventually, I think it could do well. But even if it doesn't, it's it's not a good enough reason for me to not do it. Yeah, uh, I love I love comedy in some form. I love mm-hmm. either whether it's sketch comedy or I love stand up. So something related to comedy. <clears throat> so podcast comedy, maybe comedy podcast. I don't know. Yeah, something in that realm that would be fun for me. Like I, I just need to be a little bit more. Uh, I guess I need to care a little bit less about you know financially worrying about you know my next paycheck so i have a little little safety net which i'm okay with now but i i think i can make it a little bit bigger and then i can kind of decide what to do do you ever do video essays um i used to do video essays so like uh mostly like on fifa and fifa related things i had a video essay on like why i love the old pest it was like a 20 minute essay Mm-hmm. I did a video on why FIFA sucked. That was a 40 minute essay. Yeah. I did a video on FIFA street. That was 15 minutes. Like those kinds of video essays. Mm. I love doing it. Well, oh uh, yeah. Okay. Well, you've already done that stuff. Um, yeah. But I don't I know think... if I could do it for like for video games again. I could do it for other th- I would, I wouldn't mind it. Actually, my, my game plan uh, would be to have more video essays on the guests that I invite. So if, okay. if I could dedicate like, I don't know, a week or a month to just having a good 20 minute video. That's uh, a topic my guest brought up or a topic that my guest uh, really elaborated in the podcast and mm-hmm. just dive deep into that topic using his clips, losing clips from the, from the show. So for an example, I, I have like the Steve Murphy, the Narcos guy. Oh yeah. He's coming back for another episode in, in February. We're doing it right. again. And I'd love to see if I can set up some questions uh, beforehand and then use the answers to create like a, a longer story. So you can still listen to the podcast by itself if you like, but I'd also love to have like a video that's like how much of Narcos is actually true. And then it's mm. a 20 minute essay, you know? That's a good idea. I love, I love writing, uh, creating the, a, a narrative for, for an entire, I love the script writing process. Like that's oh, cool. Yeah. I, 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 I write out scripts. Every I, I, Almost everything I do now is scripted, like short form mm. content, long form content. Only the podcast is unscripted. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I'm kind of um, been stuck on what to do creatively, but I think I had an epiphany the other day. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd like to do um, maybe like maybe a podcast that I put out monthly. So a comedy one. Yes. But I was thinking like doing like a true crime parody thing. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Because then in that. You got my attention. Yeah, in that it could be what almost whatever yeah. I want, so it can be as stupid as I want. Because I hate right. those. Uh, well, I hate true crime anyway. I think it's really horrible. Even though I I sometimes do watch and listen to it, it's absolutely disgusting yeah. the way that people get entertainment off of this stuff, you know. And um, I agree. Have you heard Sword and Scale? Mm-mm, that podcast. What's that? No, it's this American guy who just talks about true crime stuff, but it's it's awful. But it's it's kind of engaging. Mm-hmm. But he's a bit of an asshole, basically. And I found okay. him inspirational. And I'm thinking of doing something like that. Like if I could do something monthly and I could bring in all my sort of comedy friends who are really good at improvising and stuff and do interviews with them and something like that. Right. Yeah, that's an idea I had two days ago. <laughs> I'm, hey, it sounds like it'll last. <laughs> Does it sound, it sounds I think like it sounds good, yeah. <laughs> it depends what you what you're trying to get out of it like you know if you're trying to make money out of this i think podcast is like the bottom of the barrel like there's yeah totally totally i think it's more an audience really everything is about yeah. an, an audience for me now because it's like how many people can i get to come to see me live you know so i've got my mm-hmm. tour and i've actually have you ever done any um i don't usually do this sort of thing right but um manifesting that sort of stuff. Yeah, I, I've manifested. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've not really. Yeah. Uh, so I've written on a post-it note that I've got in front of me near my monitor. Uh, it just says "sell out tour." So Hell I've yeah. got my tour in May and June. If I was to sell, sell it out, out, sell out, comma, yeah, comma tour, tour. <laughs> yeah. be a seller, <laughs> yeah. do a tour, sell out. <laughs> yeah. It just says sell out. Yeah. <laughs> and I've done that. Curious. I'm doing some sponsored streams as well this month. Are you so really? Are you out. serious? Yeah, I did a Hello Fresh what one. Hello, the spot. No way. Yeah, I just thought it'd be it's easy money. <laughs> I, it's not. It's not a lot, by the way. It's not a lot. <laughs> I don't know if that makes it better or worse. I think it makes it worse. <laughs> it I think it makes yeah. it worse. I just thought because oh, no. I kept getting offered these sponsorships, and it's like, 
I mean, I don't mind saying it's like three hundred dollars to just talk about HelloFresh a few times. Is that all it takes to get on the pot on the stream, buddy? I'll throw up three hundred bucks. No problem. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't feel great about doing those, but it's just like, well, it, that's just very easy. Like, you know, yeah, I'm with and you. I need it right now. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm finding the income a bit. It's a bit weird. It's a bit unpredictable. Um, you know? what, what about the auditioning stuff? What are you auditioning for? Uh, so I just, um, so loads of stuff. I, I'm quite lucky. Um. I get put forward for quite good stuff. So I, I auditioned for a, a role in the Barbie movie, which obviously I didn't get. get the... oh. Yeah, it was. Have you seen it? I haven't seen it. But I have it not was... seen it yet. I wish I'd, I wish I saw it. I went to see Oppenheimer. I was very disappointed. I wish I went to see Barbie. I'm not interested in Oppenheimer. Really. It was really bad. It was okay. unwatchable. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, it was so boring and, and just so poorly edited. And I, I, oh. I the, my only thought was like, damn, I, I in the theater next to me, Someone chose to go to watch Barbie and they fucking were probably having a blast. And I was in there <laughs> miserable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, yeah, so I, well, I auditioned for a character who ended up being a guy who basically walks around with, with, with Will Ferrell for the whole film. So that would have been amazing, obviously. So it's like, holy shit. The opportunities are there. Like, I don't know. It's like, I, I see it as a positive. Like, obviously, I'm up against so many people and, they basically see they they look at your face and they re they decide basically if you're right or not you know but i yeah. still think it's a positive that the, the opportunity is there I, I did um i had one little acting job there's a sitcom a bbc sitcom called such brave girls which is really good it's done really really well as well um and i'm in one well i'm in two little scenes as that as like a priest which was really nice oh, yeah. to do yeah i had like I can't really see you as a priest if i'm being honest i, I don't know why? Like if you get, I don't know. You just, I don't see the vibe. I don't, I don't get the priest. I'm a vibe holy man. I don't really want to get canceled here, but I, I uh. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> no, I just don't know why. I just don't like. I can't see you. Like, I if I'm visual, you know, you talk about manifesting. Let me sit. Let me manifest me going to a church, which wouldn't happen probably. But yeah. let me try it. I, I don't yeah, see you I'm at there. the right. I don't see you there. No. I don't see if Not I was there the hiring. Somewhere? If I was the if I was the guy trying to hire you that day, I would have been like, yeah. that's "Not our guy." <laughs> Is that how it worked? No, I don't. Th <laughs> I don't think that's how you become a priest. <laughs> Like not for just... the priest, not for the priest job, for the you being a priest in the oh in right, the show. Okay. I thought you meant yeah. <laughs> no, I, no, I'm not working at the church, bro. What the hell? Well, well, something really nice about the priest thing was um, when I went in to do the to do the first scene. Uh, the director just said, he said, like, he said, oh, you know, he said, your tape was the best by far, which was really good. Like, it's really good. So, yeah. Sometimes you need to hear that kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You need to, um, <clears throat> you get all sorts of like imposter syndrome, especially like acting. Like I don't, cause I know, I don't feel like I am an actor, like, uh, cause I've not trained in it or whatever. So I always feel a bit out of place doing that. And then to hear like, Oh no, we think you're really good. That's immediately puts you at ease, you know? Right. So that was really cool. And I had, I had 11 lines to do and that's the most I've ever had in like a professional thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so I was really proud of that. And obviously acting, I mean, it pays really well, you know, you're getting like a few thousand or whatever it is for like man sorry so yeah, yeah. Man, i was gonna ask you what's the financials of that usually you don't have to go super in detail but like sure. comparing to like a job like a regular job uh it varies a bit depending on what it is obviously because it's you know if you're doing a show for disney uh or whatever compared right. to the bbc it's very different but it's it's at least it's oh okay well i did i did um you know carl pilkington right you know that guy you don't oh i thought you might he, did, he used to do a lot of stuff with ricky gervais um no oh, okay carry on he has a sitcom called sick of it and i'm in one tiny bit of that where i'm working in a cinema and i kick him out and that was like half a day's work and that was a that was maybe a thousand pounds or a bit more it might have been okay. a bit more that's not bad that's not i can't shabby. remember but yeah and then so it's usually i'd say it's usually it's usually a couple of grand i think Okay. Usually, and then you end up getting like, um, and this is when you realize how much actors must like proper actors must make, because then you sometimes get like residuals and stuff. And right. I think I was in that sitcom catastrophe for again like a second, 
And I, I don't know what happened. I think it got sold to Amazon Prime or not sold. I don't know. They acquired it or whatever it is. And I got paid yep. again, like like 800 pounds again, like which I wasn't Holy expecting shit. at all. Just I know. Nothing. Right? <laughs> Basically, I had one line in it. So then you see how much money there is in that world. And it's, yeah, it's crazy. Right. And then that's not even, com- obviously commercials is the stupid money. That's where... Like I've been, um, I went, I was asked to audition for an Xbox advert once, which was 20 grand. Holy you know, shit. I know that's just stupid, isn't it? That level of stuff, but that's I don't insane, do a lot yeah. of those. I'm, I'm not very good at the advert thing and they don't treat you very well <laughs> when you go in an audition and stuff. So I just stopped. Yeah. The problem with those is you probably have to audition for like a hundred of them before you get one. Right. Probably. Yeah. And obviously, I mean, it's good financially, but I don't really want to be on like a McDonald's advert. You know what I mean? I can see you. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Do you think I could be a priest in a McDonald's advert? Curb your enthusiasm, music plays. Um, no, I. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm trolling, but I guess the the hidden uh, thing there is that you don't you don't get paid per audition, right? Or do you? No, no. So okay, you, so that's the problem. Yeah. So a thousand bucks a day to anyone that's like thinking about that is like, oh, that's amazing. But you're gonna have to audition to ten of those, and you only get one. So that's 10 days of work for a thousand bucks. Okay. Maybe you won't spend a whole day, but let's just say hypothetically yeah. you spend a couple hours. You need to get there. You need to you get back uh, commute. Yeah. The problem so is four hours. You see, if you don't live in London, this is, I'm pretty sure all of the advert auditions are in London. I'm pretty sure they are. So if you lived right. in somewhere like Manchester, which is you know quite far away, that's sure. re- it's really expensive and really time consuming coming into London to probably be rejected right, right. You know, there's such a slim right. chance you'll get anything so that's where it gets it yeah. difficult and it's unfair like it really is you know that's how it is it, it's actually just deceptively it's not as uh unless you're consistently getting roles it's not as good uh, now i think about it because if you if you cut it down to let's say you have to do 10 of those to get one and each of those takes you let's say four hours in total Mm-hmm. that's four days of of work for a thousand bucks that's 250 and now that's like less than what i make on a on a normal client uh yeah. significantly less and i mean it, i don't know i look at it like with so not with uh not with commercials and stuff but with just like normal acting stuff i look at it as like like a learning thing where like if i don't get the thing because uh, a lot of it is self tapes now anyway most of it isn't um well for, for oh, you don't have to go TV to a place film, a lot of it is changed since lockdown because everyone realized not everyone has to go everywhere all the time you know right i don't know about commercials i think there's still a, there's, <clears throat> yeah there's, i don't know there's, there's still a lot where you have to go in but there is a lot over self tape so that is that is positive but because you get to record them yourself and you know do as many sure. takes as you want you do you do improve you know you learn a lot you become better at it. So, right. And I, I, you know, I can't think like auditioning for a film, like uh, even if it's a tiny role or whatever in something like Barbie or well, last Christmas, whatever. It's yeah, still something I, tiny, like Barbie, some small movie, like Barbie. <laughs> no, I meant the role. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying, I'm <laughs> but um, even that, like that's I, personally now, I think that's, that's pretty, that's a pretty cool opportunity. So I wouldn't think of sure. that as work really. Okay. It is, wow. but. You know, it is unpaid work technically, but I get what you're saying. You you you, you <laughs> yeah. enjoy it, and you see the the outcome being so worth it that it's not. It's even pretty fun. I mean, I think acting is quite fun, and taping can be quite fun as well. But yeah, would you ever consider having like a regular uh, remote job? Like, I don't know. Would you consider because uh, you have all the skill sets? If you really wanted to get, you can literally get the same jobs as I'm getting. You have all the skills: you content creator, script writing, whatever. I've actually you ever I've, consider that? I've looked into a couple of things which would help like um there is like um social media marketing jobs and stuff but I've never done it before but they pay really well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I've I might yeah I might look into trying to get something like that for a bit but I'll chat with you weird. off cam. I'll t- we'll talk a little bit more about off cam stuff uh okay that i i cannot disclose on stream but anyways please do please i mean i i am yeah on the lookout for stuff it's 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 weird man it's like i i've had it's been really weird for me like i've I've had times of just earning loads of money and then it just goes down again and it's like yeah you know for for lockdown a lot of people that did like uh i guess content stuff over lockdown would have seen 
right. it was crazy, like the views and stuff. So like on Twitch, I was making ridiculous money. And then that obviously goes down at the end of lockdown. But then at the same time, I'm not streaming as much and I'm gigging. But it's like also like with live comedy, it's kind of weird because the, the fees haven't gone up at all right. in like 20 years. But right. the cost of traveling and living has. So it doesn't feel it doesn't feel anymore. fair anymore. Yeah, it doesn't feel as good. No. So then you don't want to. I don't want to travel around the UK just doing loads of gigs. Either, yeah. Because it's exhausting as well. Exhausting. It's, it's not really what I want to do. It's probably so, not yeah. as fun either, right? To be always no. on the road like that. It's not. It's not for 20 minutes of stage time, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I am I am trying to figure out. Uh, okay. My, my, I do have like a plan though. Like I basically, <laughs> I need to get on things like TikTok and stuff a lot more, um, which I've been trying to do. And I need to build up my online audience, bring mm-hmm. them into my Twitch if they want, but mainly bring them into um, <clears throat> my audience at live shows. Because then I've seen people do it. There's people... I know loads of comedians now that have, excuse me, that have managed to do that and they are selling out good sized venues and that's a lot of money. Like, right. That's a lot They they could make. So if they do a tour, they could make something like, yeah, I I don't mind talking about money. Um, My last tour I did, what did I make? Probably about seven grand off of like 20 dates around the uk something like that so oh, i sold time frame yeah give me how how many what's 20 dates two months yeah i guess two months yeah two 7k months. seven thousand pounds in two yeah. months is that include the costs of traveling no oh no so it's probably cl- so profit is probably yeah five or six because that doesn't include it's probably cl- close to five right Okay. So right. it's it's not it's not nothing. It's okay. No, it's not. No, of course not. But you know, it's like it could be. It's it's just weird because you know it could be way more. So I didn't sell out the tour. There were some dates where sure. I sold loads, some where I didn't sell that well, and I'm not going back to certain places because you know. Um, Let's uh, individually shout out each of those places <laughs> <laughs> that I'm not going back to. Yeah. Let's shout out not just the place, but the uh, event coordinators, the staff. <laughs> Uh, family members if we could really the volunteers <laughs> the volunteers yeah. the orphan kids that came to watch for free yeah the volunteers addresses <laughs> um, um, yeah like yeah i've got friends who have like got huge off of basically doing what like matt rife has done where they've put crowd work up Right. Um, and it's got really popular on TikTok or whatever, and now they can sell out, like, you know, two, three hundred seaters. Yeah, and it's so it's so much money, and and we know, like, we all know that it's not. It, it's weird because it's they're not necessarily the best comedians, and they know that. It's not sure. like that's not. Re- I'm not really criticizing. Sure. It's like we know that it's not about being the best or even being excellent at what you do. You just have to be able to get on stage. It's just and good marketing. Have a big follow. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's literally good marketing. <laughs> but it is hard. I mean, I was talking to, I was explaining it to my wife the other day, actually, and I was saying it's, it's, it feels a bit like, <clears throat> it's, it's like you're like on a slot machine, like um, every time you're posting a clip, especially to right. somewhere like TikTok, because you're like, this could be the thing that gets me like ten thousand followers, because that's what happens, right? Mm, I would say <laughs> those days are kind of gone. Yeah, I've had like every. Yeah, I think that the days of like that kind of growth is kind of gone. I mean, I've had like for the past like couple of months, every single month I've had my clips reach like 120,000 accounts on Instagram, just the Instagram alone. Yeah. And that only gets you a trickle down of, of followers. Maybe that's because I have a variety content and maybe people don't know if they want to subscribe because I do all kinds of stuff. Maybe. Mm. But I think even if you were to do something like that was hyper niche or let's say something that was like, oh, I do stand ups. I'm a stand up guy. I don't think you would grow that much. I think it's a much bigger grind now than people presume it is. Sure. Like, I don't think you just need one clip that gets a million views and you get 10,000 subs. Yeah. I think you need like 10 clips that get like 10 million views mm. to get. Or, or at least, you know, not, not necessarily the one clip, but like an idea. Right. Right. So right. The first right. one goes crazy and then you're like, oh, I'm on to something. Right. Consistency. Um, yeah. Um, some volume of consistency. So, I mean,. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's so hard, right? It's, it's so hard because you don't know, like, um, 
because you feel like you're gambling or something, right? So you, you don't, you, you feel like it could happen with this, it probably won't. So then how much effort do you put into the stuff? You yeah. Know, like, do you spend it's weird. hours <laughs> on making right. TikTok? Right. It's weird because like, I, I remember even in, in the FIFA content days, like these people would get so obsessed with the numbers. And I was to a certain extent, one of these people at the start of this, like upload a video refresh. Is it number one of number? Is it my for best one of the last 10? Like, cause YouTube had this really, well, it still has this dirty way of organizing video performance based on like how it does in the first couple of days. So oh, a good okay. video would be like, Oh, this is your best performing video out of the last 10, which you're like, awesome. But a bad video would be like, this is not even in your top 10. You're like, fuck. I'm doing yeah. some shit. I'm a piece of garbage. I don't belong on earth. So it would give you this like weird sense of like, I need to keep making stuff to keep like satisfying this like dopamine part of my brain. Now mm -hmm. what I do is I upload, I don't even think about it. I just go on my day. Like I, I don't check my analytics and some videos that I put a lot of time into tank and some videos that I thought of in an afternoon, filmed in an afternoon, edited in an afternoon, I upload do well. So I don't know. I, yeah. I don't know. Well, I don't I'm really putting, think of these things. So, so you saw that clip, is you messaged me, didn't you? That clip where I'm asking that guy how many British values he has, right? Um, right. Do you even understand what the context is of that? Do you even, have uh, you ever heard the term British well, values? No, it just sounded funny that. Yeah, <laughs> it's just the thing <laughs> yeah. that gets, that people say. It's like, um, it, it doesn't even make sense. It's, it's one of those. It's very vague, right? Right, right. People don't even know what it means. And then for me to, uh, like, we don't even know what it is. And for me to keep asking this guy how many he has, it's just so stupid, you know. Um, right. It did well on, it got like 30,000 TikTok views or whatever, which I don't usually get. So that's good. Um, but that series, I'm hoping. So what I've done is, because I am trying to, you know, grow. So the stuff that you like, like the acting school. Yes. Uh, which, if people don't know, it's a series where it was just, just a little web series where I improvise with a comedian friend and pretend that um, I'm like an acting coach, but I'm like terrible at acting and I'm an awful guy, basically, is the idea. Right, it's right. like that. Um, this one, this series is going to be called Bilal's Britain. Hmm, and it's nice. about me trying to improve Britain. Um, so I'm like kind of the same character, like very arrogant, but kind of stupid. Right. Like I don't really know what I'm talking about. Um, so it's like a life depiction. No, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so like, um, I've got, got that him. clip. I've got that clip. Yep. He's a, uh, I describe him as a, um, unapolog as unapologetically Muslim, that guy, <laughs> Okay. I, yeah. you know, basically I, I, yeah, find out if I, I, I assess whether he's allowed back into British society. Um, I'll speak to, um, an environmentalist person. Um, I would do what I'm doing one. I did one about video game violence as well. And they're all just very silly, you know, but I'm hoping it's like that Ali can... G in the house style where he goes and talks to professionals, but he always plays like the really ignorant uh, interviewer, right? Sort of. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I mean, but all of my guests, like none of them are real. They're all comedians. Um, ah, okay. Gotcha. So, you know, we were just messing around. We filmed it in the same place as we did the acting school. It just looks a little bit better. We had a better right. setup. So I'm hoping that that series, I think it's very funny. But I'm hoping to clip that up and share that on stuff. And I'm hoping that will have a bit of an impact. That's my that's my plan. Are, are you filming? I just had a curious a technical question. Are you filming yeah. vertically for with two cameras? Or are you filming no. like a big horizontal thing and you're going to upload the full scale? Yeah. So we film okay. it like you would a, a movie or whatever. And I, I just edit okay. it on... I just, you okay. just have to do the stupid zoom in thing, right? To make it vertical. Yeah. Fit. But I'm not going to start filming vertical. I don't not, like for stuff like that. I wouldn't film it vertical. Interesting. Like, come on. Okay. Come on. Like, like, come on. I'm sorry. Come on. Are you, hey, <laughs> look at my job. Dude. Doing I, film, I film vertical. <laughs> uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> hey, you're making fun of my job, man. No, this but I, I mean, no, but if you have like <laughs> all the, I don't know, if you have a studio and people in acting and stuff, I feel like, Come on, we still have to shoot it like it's a movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? We can still edit sure, it to sure. look like a thing, but I just I'm not yeah, ready yeah, yeah. for 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 that level of pandering to sort of tick <laughs> yeah, if you know what I mean. My man, hello Fre hello fresh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Vertical stream. I want it right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean I've done the Hello Fresh one. I had to so it it would have been extra money if I cooked on stream, but I didn't. <laughs> Right, I just didn't. I just I thought about it and then I thought no. I don't know why that's such a funny premise. Hello Fresh <laughs> would have given you extra money if you cooked on stream. Yeah, I know, I know. 
I know hey, it's weird. You, I just can you I, I, zoom in on that pan? <laughs> yeah, can you zoom in on that toast. I feel really weird about it, and the thing is, my audience know as well that I don't really want to do it. So it's kind of funny. Ugh, I think hilarious. they get that's content. an extra thing out of watching me. Do you know I did oh. when the uh, it was during the World Cup? I think oh, that's a cat. It was during crying. the World Cup, and um, I I was approached to do by Subway to do um, just a watch along. It was literally like England versus someone in a groups game. I can't even remember. And it was just right. that, right? But it was sponsored by Subway. And look, I think... And Jared. I, was, I, I don't was this pre-Jared days? Sorry, was this pre-Jared days of Subway or post-Jared? I thought you were saying Gerard, who played for <laughs> England. And I was thinking that was ages ago. No, this is very post-Jared. Uh, it's post-Jared and Gerard. <laughs> okay, cool. Carry on. I'm trying to get a time, time understanding. Yeah, I actually watched a video essay about Jar- Jared recently. Um, anyway, um, Gerard or Jared? Yeah. Wait a minute. <laughs> very different guys, right? Yeah, I very think healthy so. though. Um, they both ate HelloFresh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I had to do this thing right, which was so cringe. Where I think I think it was when there was a substitution in the game, I had to be like, "Oh, it's a sub." And I had to do this with my hands, which <laughs> listeners can't see. But I had to be like, oh, because that was a subway thing they were doing. Yeah, I did that for a thousand pounds. I know, man. I know. I know. <laughs> no, this is content. I did no, that. It is. It's funny, uh, right? Uh, oh, it's so funny because like, <laughs> I'm Let's... wondering like, why did he do this? Why did he do yeah. this? For how much? And then you're like, I did that for a thousand pounds. That's the thing, because uh, there are oh. people who absolutely don't care, right? There's, there's like most people don't care about adverts at all. They'll do anything, right? They'll, they'll completely embarrass themselves. You see, absolutely. like, you see Ronaldo really famous Shoppy. celebrities. Who, who's that? A Ronaldo Shoppy ad. Oh my god! <laughs> exactly right. And you see, you have like really, really oh. big celebrities doing these weird mobile phone game ads now. Because yep. they, obviously they got loads of money, <clears throat> like even like these Justy adverts that are getting out of hand. Like they clearly they don't care. Like most people are just give me the money and right. I'll do it. I don't feel like that. I I get really embarrassed <laughs> if it's something. Sure. And I'd still be very picky. Like I would never do. Um, I would never advertise for like alcohol or gambling or stuff like that because like ethically, sure. I don't. I don't think you know. Not a fan. Um, of yeah, mm-hmm. I think for something like Hello Fresh. I thought it's fine. I go on about cooking. I'm I'm quite into cooking anyway. So I kind of made it legitimate in my mind to do it. Um, you look like you cook. You look like you cook. That's... Thank you. I do like, do you cook? <laughs> I love cooking. Yeah, absolutely. It's but fun, not for me. It? Only for others. I'm not a fan of, I mean, I cook sometimes for me, but mostly for others. So what do you eat? <sighs> yeah. Uh, here we have something called like food to go, like places, a lot of them. Like just a pop up shop that sells a bunch of like made like quality food. Okay. And it's called Comida para llevar, like food oh. to go, literally. So you can buy fish, you can buy octopus, you can buy pastas, chicken, like all kinds of like as good as I could prepare it myself. Wow, well, way better than I could prepare it myself. And it's really cheap. It's like well, yesterday I ate salmon and potatoes. It was seven and a half euros. No, it was seven euros. That's good. What is that in pounds? Uh, uh, I don't know, like uh, seven five pounds, seven euros to pounds. Five, uh, six pounds. Six, six pounds. pounds. Yeah, that's for not salmon bad, and yeah. potatoes. That's a that's a. I mean, for me to make it to buy the ingredients, it would take me mm. an hour, and then I think, okay, that's an hour I lost of work, and I get paid X amount of dollars per hour. Yeah, it, and I also lose energy for preparing food. So, like, no, you know, look, there's a lot of times can, where I just buy I, it. I do think you do seem like you've got things under control like you know if you can you you're doing okay like you've got yeah, your job and stuff so yeah you're allowed to treat your oh sorry you're allowed to treat yourself to a seven euro piece of salmon and three potatoes <laughs> <laughs> so condescending so condescending so perfect i don't know why that happened oh, you got just... you got seven you got seven euros for fucking potatoes hey <laughs> eh? <laughs> I was being really sincere, and then it was just funny to say that at the end. 
<laughs> three tiny yeah, potatoes. Seven, year, seven euros for three potatoes, huh? You fucking, oh, I don't know, you're fucking the queen. Are you the queen? Are you the queen, Gov? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, you know, there's a big difference between buying that and like what I yeah. was doing in lockdown when I was earning loads on Twitch is I was getting like Deliveroo like all the time. Oh, and it's that so that expensive. Hurts. It's Oof. so expensive. That one hurts. I'm going to send you a video. You have Instagram. Okay. I'm going to send you a video of the place that I, I got food from. Okay. And you can see the quality and, and, and the food they have. Variety. That's big. One is variety. One is quality. Because you can't eat the same thing every day. You'll get fucking, you'll get bored out of your mind, right? Sure. It's actually amazing. And they have a lot of these places in Spain. It, it just, sometimes it just doesn't make sense almost to buy the ingredients when I could just have a pre-made thing that's delicious and and relatively healthy uh, we don't we have a um a thing called i think it's called too good to go have you heard about this it's no. um it's uh you basically there's certain places that do it restaurants or whatever and they just make these bags of like basically leftover food that sounds horrific yeah, I made it sound like they scrape it off people's plates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did. Uh, I believe that what you're talking about is a homeless shelter, my man, and that's not food for you. That's food for the homeless. <laughs> this guy's going to homeless shelters, and he's like, dude, you can get endless food completely free. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that looks good. I'm looking at your little video you said. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah, it looks good. Um, no, they just like, you know, you know, things like... Um, the stuff that that doesn't get sold, they they sort of pack it into a little bag, and it's like a lot cheaper than it would be. Um, right. But I've not I've not tried it yet. But yeah, um, I mean, I need you to come to visit uh, me, me in Valencia yeah, one, I'd one like weekend to. just to I, see the life. Just to see you know what? Life. If I get something, if something happens for me, like I'll make you a promise. If I have something really good happen career wise, like a big thing that is like a cause mm -hmm. for celebration, hell yeah, then I'll make Valencia. My place. So you're saying it wrong, stay, by the way. We don't like it. We don't. We don't say it like that. <laughs> Yo, that would be a good uh, thing to write into, like the uh, your character. Like yeah. <laughs> you're telling me that yeah. I say Valencia wrong. Like that's exactly the sort of thing he'd do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually, you know what? Bal uh, Valencia is actually said with a B. It's Valencia. Valencia. Here they pronounce their right. B's as B's. Yeah. So no one here actually says Valencia. They say and Valencia. Is that, is that everyone? Or is that the sort of uh, that's part of Spain? the province of Valencia, of like Valencia? Yeah, that's how people speak here. Now in Barcelona, they speak with a bit of an accent, or um, I believe like the C's are like th, like Barcelona. Yeah. yeah. Or uh, other parts have different uh, different areas where they put a lot of their emphasis in their words. Uh, but uh, in Spanish, in all Spanish, uh, V's are B's. In Latin American Spanish, it's V's are V's. So vis Latin Americans, yes, vis a vis. Uh, ho, 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 no, uh, <laughs> so Latinos would say Valencia. Is there a noise? Is there a background noise, or is it fine? By the way, I don't hear it. I don't hear okay, it. Okay, great. No, it's good. Um, yeah, so that's yeah. That's so. And, and Latinos would say Valencia. Like, oh, do they, they? they don't have that accent yet? Okay. Yeah. So well, I'd love. Fact. I've never been to Spain. I I think it sounds like you're in like a little bit of a drought in terms of uh, weather and uh, lifestyle. Yeah. I think it wouldn't hurt to just you know come on. Yeah, here. it's like a hundred euro ticket. I know. I have my not even hundred. What am I talking about? I know a friend who flew from Manchester to Valencia. It was twenty seven pounds. Really? Yeah. There's times you can find it. It's dirt cheap. So twenty seven pounds, and you you have your accommodation sorted upstairs. Oh, it's a cheap it's a cheap trip. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, I, I will. So that that's, uh, yeah, hopefully now something will happen. As in, <laughs> if I could land some kind of, you know, because the thing is for me, it's like, it, it's weird because it's like, I'm not satisfied. At the, I mean, no one's ever satisfied, but like, right. I'm I'm not that happy about things generally. Like it could be better sure. uh, work-wise, but I know that something can turn very quickly. Like I've got, this Radio 4 thing I mentioned, and I'll probably be pitching an idea to them. And then if right. I actually manage to get a series, that's quite a big deal. Like, and financially, yeah, that's really good. I, that's thousands. I'm not sure how much. Um, I just love then, this notion that, like, you need a, a massive lottery ticket to buy a 20 euro flight to Valencia. Like, that's a funny premise within itself. No, but what <laughs> I mean is, <laughs> no, I mean, I won't feel, I don't feel like I can go on holiday right now because I've got too much. Oh, stuff to come do. on. You know what I mean? Come too much on. work. 
Okay, if it's work, um, that's different. But like, yeah, do, yeah, do you yeah. feel like you deserved a holiday? Uh, well, Until I just had Christmas. It? I just had to go over to my in-laws yeah, but... and stuff for Christmas, and that felt like. Is that is that a reward or no? <laughs> is that a punishment? <laughs> No, it was it was nice. Um, Lovely. Or like there's I could like, even folks, like for the ones that are listening, there's a gun behind his head as he said that was nice. <laughs> yeah. His his wife is in the room holding a gun. To his head. I could get like um, if there's auditions I get where it's like a recurring sitcom character, and again yeah. that would be massive. Like that could change everything. So it's of course. like there are things that can happen that can change your life but it's just like it's been a while i mean it did kind of to be honest twitch changed my life when that all happened um yeah big time because that gave me like a big audience which i just didn't have before so you never know in it it's like something else could kick off like that so uh, another to... reason uh, uh for traveling <laughs> uh, which i really like so uh two years ago i actually did a podcast with this guy his name is stefan he was uh a data analyst, a uh, Serbian guy, lived in Amsterdam. I, I kind of, when we talked, I kind of realized, okay, this is like just like me, but he lives in Amsterdam. Like if my parents decided to go to Amsterdam, I think we would turn out almost identical. Like he went down the content space. He likes traveling. He He's a freelancing, whatever. And uh, through that, we became good friends. And one of the best things that I did was, and we both did, like he visited me in Valencia mm-hmm. and I visited him in, in Amsterdam. And visiting someone uh for a week just to see how like their life is how they work it's a really good like motivator it's also a good like it, it it's a good boost it's like an energy boost it's like you know you, you're playing mario kart yeah yeah you know when the two cars like in the newer ones hit each other and you get like a mm. a speed boost mm-hmm. that's kind of what it felt like it felt like oh okay he does this this way like okay he structured his day this way or he okay, he's getting his income from this. Like he, I got to spend literally five days with him and I kind of got to see how his life works. And I'm like, oh, I like this side of this. Why couldn't I just do that? I could, why don't I implement and, and vice versa? Cool. He came here, he's like, oh, I like the sun here. So he actually is really interesting. He, he lives in Amsterdam, but he really doesn't like the weather in the winter. So during right. those times, he does, uh, n- not a term he made up, but intermittent traveling, mm. intermittent nomading. So for the for the shittier months, he just goes to a warmer place. So he comes visits me for five days, goes to I don't know Dubai or some random other place that's warm, mm. and uh, the just the energy boost from escaping like a cold climate, the lack of sun. He's like, it's more than enough for me to when I come back home, I, I'm like reinvigorated. That's cool. Yeah. I so I think there's a lot of value recently. to that. I forgot to mention. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's nice, isn't it? Like I really love Lovely. the. Um, do you care about uh, buildings? excited (laughs) i love this is a thing most people don't know i love good urbanization yeah i love it i love bike lanes i Mm. love good public transportation yeah i love good building structure and layouts Mm. and not even trolling people i watch like countless hours of this channel called not just bikes it's a canadian guy that moved to amsterdam and he just talks about good urbanization cool (laughs) <laughs> so go back, so go, back, go back to the buildings <laughs> i loved walking around looking at the the architecture there man that is just so nice yeah. it's just beautiful it's a beautiful place what time it's, of the year did you go when did we go like um it was summer summer was yeah it? that's when you want to be there yeah yeah no it was great it was really nice um but just like they have this nice they have a really nice consistency with their architecture mm-hmm. that, like that we don't have in london Right, because you just have foreign billionaires come and like just do whatever they want and just build <laughs> right, flats right. wherever, and they all look right. weird. You know, it's like there's a lot of that. Um, so yeah, it's kind of London looks kind of crazy, but Amsterdam's got that really nice like, all the all the black window sills and stuff. Mm-hmm. Really nice, man. I thought yeah. about moving there. I thought I wondered if I could see myself moving there, but I'll tell you something I didn't like about it, mm-hmm. which I'm interested to see if you agree. So me and yeah. my wife went for like four days or something. There was very little small talk from strangers. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? Everyone keeps themselves to themselves, which is fine, obviously. Yeah. But because we were together for a week uh, or whatever, um, hanging around, you know, uh, sure. restaurants and stuff. Sometimes someone just gets chatting to you. I'm used to that happening. And not, yeah. you know, not like their life story, but it's just a bit of that. And it felt like, there was none of that in my time in Amsterdam. And I spoke to a Dutch friend and he said, yeah, he said, that's not really, 
they don't do that. They're they're a little more reserved. Although I I can't yeah. tell you from my experience because I got a very like uh, I got the best version of Amsterdam because I, I went okay. with a friend. I stayed at his yeah. house. He showed me the inner workings of the city. I met his friends. So like it was always felt like a you know That's open different. yeah tight community. Yeah, as a tourist, I don't know. I don't mm. know what that would be like. Spain is kind of like that because most of the mostly it's because of language barrier thing. But once you learn a little bit of Spanish, mm. everyone here is everyone here is open. Like the other day I was on the bus and I was just listening to my music. I, it was really full and I'm just standing there. I have my Valencia sweater and the, the bus driver starts asking me like, do you think we're going to win? And it took me a second to process. Like, what are you talking about? He's like, the Valencia, like tomorrow, Atletico, big game. I'm like, oh yeah. Like, I don't know. I think, I think we have a chance. So we just have a conversation about it's great. Valencia. Like, and that happens all the time. Like that's not a yeah. one-off occurrence. Football is a very good conversation starter as well. Mm -hmm. It's brilliant. Football has been, yeah. Football is a great way to like bring people's guards down. Like if you Definitely. know a little bit about football, do you ever go? Country, do, you, do you ever go see Valencia? All the time, all the time. We actually went last oh. uh, week. Yeah, they. Beat, I I love uh, this stadium, man. The Mestalla. It looks amazing. Yeah, it's dope. No, it's dope. That's like I said. If you ever come here, easy get tickets. We'll we'll go. That's are they one on the list. Are they in the Europa League this season? What what's currently? The crushing it i don't know what's going on they've won the last four of their five games they are in the seventh spot they just beat athletic bilbao who okay. beat barcelona in the in the cup so they're actually killing right. it i don't know but are they going. playing in europe know. as well no. they, last they year they were it. close to relegation no no last year oh, they were they? Like right i didn't know that yeah okay. yeah they have a really bad owner there's a lot of drama within the club no one likes the oh. owner they actually have signs that say lynn go home and they hold up at the, every game at the 19th minute like, oh the banners oh damn but it's funny because the guy i don't think he's actually ever been to valencia so he is home i'm not <laughs> yeah <laughs> he, he can't be more home than he is. he's never been to the fucking city yeah yeah that sounds great yeah no I, i've seen when i've seen when arsenal have played valencia and stuff um i always think that stadium looks amazing it's kind of, kind of got a weird shape doesn't it it's very uh vertical so it feels like it's very tight like it's there's no yeah. bad seats in the stadium it's very like that's great. I don't know, like a bowl, like a really deep bowl. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to do... Uh, I've never really traveled that much, really. And it would be yeah. nice to do that more. Um, I think I've just got to get settled in, like like we've been saying. If I can sort out my routines and all of that stuff. And yeah, that'd be yeah. great. Come on down anytime. Uh, you're always welcome. I've said that uh, since day one. Uh, yeah. We've done an hour and five minutes, actually. Oh, yeah. Flew by. Yeah, it was great. Oh, boy. Um, this is our nice little annual catch up. I'll, I'll talk mm -hmm. to you a little bit more about some of the freelance stuff after. Uh, what are you currently Please working don't. on? What's what's in the near future? Okay, so my tour around the UK for anyone listening, UK See? and Dublin, one day in Dublin, um, is in May and June. You can find that on my sort of Twitter or website yep. or whatever. We'll include links. Uh, Instagram. Uh, apart from that, I mean, I'm trying, so I'm not writing a new show this year. I'm trying to have a break to try and write more scripted stuff and focus my energy yep. there because writing an hour of comedy, it really takes up all your, all your time, all your anxiety goes into that, you know, of course, you don't really do anything. Some else. of the best comedians in the world can't do an hour a year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah. Having a break from that and just, yeah, trying to write stuff. So I'm just going to be, yeah trying to make lots of stuff for twitch youtube um tiktok well we TikTok. see you dancing on tiktok can you I'm confirm live on this on this pod on yep. this podcast that you will be in fact dancing to potentially a hello uh hello fresh, hello fresh ad yeah. yeah i'm doing wow. that for 30 pounds <laughs> <laughs> i'm doing that for a free meal from hello <laughs> yeah <laughs> I don't sell out unless it's for a free meal from HelloFresh. Yeah. Um, yeah. And as, yeah, so I'm going to be, oh, I have, a, I'll be releasing a little series called Bilal's Britain on a little, it's a little yeah. satirical thing on, that'll be on YouTube uh, mainly. How many episodes? Uh, just four currently. Four. I'm going to see how okay. it goes. Also, I mean, the plan is to um, pit, like have that, maybe cut it down to a little one minute thing, all the episodes, and then try and pitch that to TV and see Ooh. if that could go anywhere because it's like if you can see what my character's like and then i can write other things for him to do you know that's the plan right. um it's worth a go 
uh yeah that and then yeah i just always always got stuff going on um online um twitch streams weekly monthly what's the new weekly yeah well so the pez thing is is weekly and there's still a lot of people um committed to that so i have to keep that going oh my god i've nearly done 200 of those really yeah i've done like 196 i think damn yeah good for you that's awesome yeah it's it's crazy isn't it a little scary a little scary (laughs) yeah yeah it's yeah it started in april 2020 that's i think i think when i did my first one or maybe may um yeah so it's yeah that i think that's everything i got going on um yeah lots of stuff um i'm really do you have a patreon i don't i am trying to so i've got a couple of friends who do really well off patreon and I've mm-hmm. been speaking to them for advice and stuff, and I'm going to do more on there. But that's obviously like you have to like me first, so that's behind a paywall. Oh, that's going to be hard. that's going to be hard to do. Uh- <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm not promoting. That would be weird to promote that, right? To someone who doesn't nah, know me. Yeah, yeah, it would be. Yeah, you can't promote Patreon. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. you're right. You're no, you're yeah. right. <laughs> but I was, I was just asking you if you if you do that. Yeah, because I'm going to be putting a lot more effort into that basically because that's a good side income if you can make it work yeah. Um, awesome yeah yeah that's everything but yeah thanks for having me again man good to chat always a good pleasure i hope we do this more often uh i hope we maybe just you know we do it in person but not actually a pod just hang out <laughs> yeah yeah sure yeah in valencia yeah. in valencia valencia <laughs> <laughs> if you've learned one thing on this episode folks it's how to say it correctly and that's it <laughs>